Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this video, we're gonna go over the top 10 most common issues people have with SIM settlements, especially those people who are new to the mod. All right, so the first issue you might run into after you install SIM settlements is that you will find none of the items are available in the build menu. You'll look under special, you'll look for a SIM settlements menu, you'll check under furniture, and you will find nothing. This is usually a sign you haven't yet run the SIM settlements holotape, and in that case, I will recommend you go check out the quick start video, which hopefully we'll have linked up in the corner there for you, uh, but if not, it's right on the homepage of my channel. Basically, you need to grab the holotape. There are a ton of different ways, whether it be console command, MCM, other mods allow to drop it right in your inventory, or picking it up in the world, but running that holotape for the first time is what actually unlocks the menu items that you can build in workshop mode. This next issue is kind of two things in one I'm going to describe, uh, but the same mod solves both of these problems. So the two problems are that you don't have a custom SIM settlements menu in workshop mode, or if you can no longer find the SIM settlements items and they had previously been available. This also applies to any items in general. If you ever load into the game and find that workshop items are missing that were there before, a, the same mod can solve both of these problems. And that mod is Settlement Menu Manager. So Settlement Menu Manager, when installed, will add a custom Sim Settlements build menu where everything from Sim Settlements is combined into one easy to locate spot. And Settlement Menu Manager also has the ability to fix your build menu. So if you find that after installing or uninstalling some mods or updates, that certain items disappeared from your, from your workshop menu, you can run the Settlement Menu Manager holotape from the Settlement Menu Manager mod and use the Settlement Menu Rescue option. And when you click on this, it will appear that nothing's happening, but if you wait just for about 20 to 30 seconds, you'll get a pop-up prompt telling you that your menu was restored correctly. And after you get that, you can go back into workshop mode and most of your items should be restored. Now there is the chance that certain items that use script injection won't work correctly and you'll need to reinstall those to get them to re-inject after you run this rescue. You, but any mod that uses Settlement Menu Manager, like Sim Settlements, will be restored to normal after you run this rescue. Another issue you might run into is right after you load the holotape, if you're unable to get past this particular screen, pressing OK will just loop back through this and show you the same information over and over again, where when it's working, it will show you this which means that Sim Settlements is now installed and ready for you to start building. So if you are unable to get this, this means you need to reinstall Sim Settlements. It generally can happen from mod managers failing to copy over all of the files correctly, but I've seen this happen for Xbox players as well, in which case, again, you're going to need to delete the mod and reinstall it. Now, if that doesn't work, the other thing that sometimes works for players is to disable the mod HUD framework, load the holotape again with Sim Settlements until you get past this screen, then save your game, exit, and reinstall HUD framework. So those are the potential solutions for that. If it still continues to not work for you, definitely head to the simsettlements.com forums and we can try and give you some tips to, to get past it even further because it's likely due to some sort of mod conflict. Likely the most common issue new players to Sim Settlements run into is the 999 issue. So if you look at the top of my screen there, you'll see that it shows I currently have 999 water and 999 defense on a brand new settlement. So that's definitely not true. That is actually just a HUD issue. The vanilla HUD from Bethesda is incapable of showing negative numbers up there. So right now, there is a negative water and defense on the settlement, and it's causing that 999. So if you have the mod HUD framework, and you turn on the Citizen Needs HUD from Sim Settlements, which will be enabled by default if you installed HUD framework, you will see the system on the left, which is a HUD designed specifically for some settlements that shows you how all of your plots are doing and it is capable of showing the negative numbers so as you can see in the water and defense rows it has the appropriate negative number to fix this all you have to do is bring that number out of the negative so even if you don't have hud framework installed just start building things for the number that's 999 so if you so see 999 defense build a few turrets and as soon as it comes out of the negative it will get corrected on your hud and then same for water just build some pumps or whatever you like and as soon as you get it out of that negative the 999 issue will go away. 
If you find that any of your plots appear to be stuck, they seem like they're just in perpetual construction and not making any progress, this can be a bunch of different things. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of potential solutions. So if you find that there's nothing on the plot like this one in front of me, this is almost assuredly a sign that the plot itself just got stuck in running the code and a simple refresh will solve that. And you can do that by activating the sensor on the plot and choosing the refresh plot option. And it will basically have the code rerun and try and unstick itself. If instead you find that there are items on there on the actual plot, then it's probably one of these other issues. So again, the refresh plot is always going to be your first go-to. That should be the first thing you try. But if that doesn't appear to work, you might want to try a different building plan. So first what you would do is go to the plot and choose look at plaque so you can see which building plan it's using. Then go to the ASAM sensor under choose building plan and just pick a different one. And then hit build this and then exit out of the menu. And this will try a different building plan to see if maybe there was just a bug in the building plan you had chosen. If that turns out to work, there's a chance that that's something that you just need to report to the author, which again, you can find on that view plaque, you'll see, or the look at plaque rather, you'll see next to the name of the building plan is the author so that you can reach out to them and let them know that there's a problem with their particular plan. But before you do that, the next thing you can try and is worth trying is to just replace the plot. So I would scrap the plot that's there and rebuild it and see if a new one using the original building plan does work for you occasionally. After building a plot, it can just fail to initialize properly where the workshop scripts that run the whole settlement system just don't recognize the plot and aren't capable of running the appropriate scripts. And if that happens, the plot kind of ends up in a limbo state where it will not function. The other thing that can have this effect is the realistic build times setting. So some of you may accidentally have enabled realistic build times or not realized it was enabled due to the wizard options you, you chose. So you can check for that under options, gameplay options, and then immersion. You'll find one called realistic build times. And what this does is makes the plots take a day or two to both build and upgrade each of their levels. So it can seem like they're stuck for a very long time. So if you found that that option was on and you didn't mean to, simply turn it off and then go sleep through a 24 hour cycle and you should find that the plot has completed. The next issue we're gonna talk about requires us to be in a settlement like this, Ten Pines Bluff. If you find that auto assignment is not working for all of your settlers, it's likely due to the auto assignment settings and something you probably didn't realize about certain NPCs in the game. So these two in particular are an example. These NPCs look like traditional settlers, but they're actually flagged the same way a character like Sturgis or Preston are. So these are actually considered unique NPCs and so Sim Settlements treats them as such. And this is relevant again because of the auto assignment settings. So if you pop into your holotape and go under the gameplay, options and then to assignment you'll see that by default the auto assign unique npcs is turned off with some settlements and this is so that you're not going to be messing with the assignment for characters like the Abernathys, which you might want to leave on their default assignments. Uh, but if you turn this on, some settlements will then be able to reassign even unique NPCs. So this is most likely the cause of your issue for those particular NPCs. And the rest of these settings will do various things regarding auto assignment. So the best thing to do if you want some settlements to have total control over your assignment is to just turn all of these on and that will ensure the most people possible get assigned to things automatically. If you're trying to use Sim Settlements for the city plans and you get this message, there are currently no city plans available for this area, this could mean a number of things. So first up, it could just mean that there are no city plans for that particular settlement. So the each settlement in order to be automated does need a city plan and this is kind of a pre-designed layout for a settlement and by default sim settlements includes none of these if you have the three-in-one version or you have rise of the commonwealth then most of the settlements created by bethesda are available as city plans. The two exceptions at the time of this recording are Spectacle Island and Boston Airport, which do not have them. But all of the rest of the settlements created by the Bethesda from both the base game and the DLC do have city plans available, as long as you have either three in one or Rise of the Commonwealth installed. But beyond that, you would need to have 
city plans from add-on packs. So there are tons of city plans available. You can get them through Nexus or Bethesda.net. And a lot of them even cover the settlements added by third-party mods. So if you're trying to use this feature in a non-Bethesda settlement, you would need a city plan from a mod. And if you're not doing that and you just want to get city plans in general, the best place to get a ton of them is to just make sure you have the Rise of the Commonwealth expansion installed. So there are two ways this, this could come up. One, you're in a settlement that doesn't support it. And two, you just don't have any city plans installed. Now, if you find your new city plan is never making any farms, that is probably due to the design of the city plan. So not every city plan actually provides all of the resources for your settlers. And this was by design, especially with the rise of the Commonwealth city plans, where they were designed to all work together. So the idea was always that you would set up provisioners between all of them, as we assumed most some settlements players were either using the local leader perk because they were focusing on settlements, had some sort of mod to make it not necessary anymore, or were using a mod like the logistics station, which would solve that problem that way. So essentially, these designs of the city plans are assuming you're going to set up provisioners between a lot of your other settlements and take care of those extra needs in that way. So for example, this raid rocket city plan from ROTC has no farms and that's by design. So outside of setting up provisioners between them, the other way you can solve this is by using the change plot type. So if you have a particular plot you want to add, so if you want to add agricultural, for example, you can go to any two by two plot or interior plot, choose the customize option and actually change change the plot on the fly into the type that you want. So that is our solution to allow you guys to convert any of the city plans over to work exactly how you want them to, is just swapping out the plot types to get the resource you need. Aside from shortages of resources from city plans, another common issue players run into is having not enough beds or jobs at a settlement that has a city plan on it. And this is because each level of a city plan is designed to support a certain number of settlers. So if you're playing naturally with sim settlements, it will prevent the city from recruiting additional settlers beyond what its max capacity is. But if you tweaked your options or added a city plan to a settlement that had a lot more settlers than its first level could support, or if you sent extra settlers manually from other places, you could end up with more settlers than a city plan can support yet or at all. And so the solution to this is going to be to either send those extra settlers away or just help your settle your settlement level up so that it has more spaces. Or lastly, you can actually just add your own beds and jobs to a settlement and your settlers will never destroy them. Though once the settlement levels up, it might cover up the things you build. So if you want to know how many settlers a settlement can support, you're going to want to grab the mod HUD framework and you'll see on the extra HUD piece from some settlements on the bottom left hand corner of my screen there, it shows that I currently have nine out of six. That means this particular city plan supports six settlers at this level and until it levels up those three people are going to remain homeless and jobless unless I manually give them something to do. If you find that your city plans seem to be stuck and won't ever upgrade, even though you're certain you see that you're at 100% toward the next level, whether it be on the HUD, like on my screen right now in the lower left-hand corner, or by accessing the city plan and seeing that it says percent to next level 100. There are three different reasons that this might be happening to you. So number one is that you don't have enough supplies. So if you click on the safe, you'll see that there's an upgrade scrap collected thing. That needs to be at 100%. So if that's not, you can either wait for it to eventually fill up from your settlement gathering its own junk, or the quicker way to do it is to just donate junk yourself, and that percentage will slowly tick up as it processes through all that junk you've donated. So once that is at 100% as well, your settlers will then be able to upgrade. The other issue could be happiness. So if your happiness is below 70, your settlement will definitely not upgrade. And you can see if you have workshop, or rather HUD framework installed, there'll be a little unhappy symbol next to the 100%. And that means you're not quite at the happiness. So for level one, you need to have 70 happiness, level two, 80, and level three, 90. So you need a lot of happiness in these city plans in order for them to upgrade. So if you're finding that your settlers are not building the right things to increase their happiness, you have a couple of options. Either you can swap some plots over to recreational, or you can donate Nuka-Cola, 
alcohol and chems to the supply safe and that will give boosts to happiness to your settlement so that you can get up high enough in order to do those upgrades and then the last thing that's a likely cause for some of you to not get upgrades if you've got all those other issues resolved is the build limit so you'll see right now i am at the build limit and this is just the level zero design of red rocket from rise of the commonwealth this is very common with the city plans that they will fill up the default build limit now by default sim settlements does acknowledge the build limit and this is to protect your save because going over the build limit on a system that can't handle it or on a system that can handle it but that has a lot of mods you can find that your saves will end up becoming corrupt from going too far over the build limit so it's definitely something you should be careful with and experiment with to learn what your particular load order and system can handle so i know that my system can handle a crazy amount over the build limit so i tend to just turn that off but by default it should be on and if you go under performance options you'll find it it's called respect build limit so i have it off on my game you might find that it's on so if you turn that off and I don't recommend most of you doing this unless you're on PC you will allow some settlements to upgrade no matter what but if you want to leave that on for safety but still want to allow the occasional upgrade I would instead recommend what you do is go to the individual settlement that you want an upgrade to occur in that you're at build limit and instead just nudge the build limit up a bit and you can do that through the city manager holotape so if you go under tools and then configuration tools there's a build limit increase max so if you click this once it will make sure you're confirming you understand the risks and the risks are basically what I just told you that you can end up with save game corruption by going too far over the build limit you hit that yes and then it's going to tell you how far you are over so right now I am already 14% over so if I increase it by 25% I essentially only gain a 9% benefit so what it will do in this case it will offer you if you want to give a straight 25% benefit which in this case would result in an actual 43% increase and so basically you can just say yes just increase it by 25 percent from the vanilla or increase it to usage plus 25 which is the more useful but that does push you up a lot higher so this is saying i'm going to then be 43 percent over the numbers that I tend to use and tell people is safe to do on Xbox is don't allow yourself to go more than 100% over the build limit. That generally tends to be fine for Xbox, even the original. Um, so if you find that this percentage warns you that it's going to go much over 100%, I would say no to this uh, secondary option here. But I'm going to say yes to it, which means that I'm going to get a nice 25% buffer on my build limit bar. So if I pop in there and take a look, you'll see that I've got about a quarter of it available now. And so once that's available, if you have respect build limit turned on, then once the next cycle of city plan upgrades goes through, assuming that you have the happiness needs met, the scrap collected, and the thing at the bottom there at 100%, you will see your city plan upgrade. All right, guys, thanks for watching this top 10 problems with Sim Settlement video. If you guys have specific requests for tutorial videos you'd like to see about how you do certain things in Sim Settlements, definitely make them in the comments below. I've got a few more in mind, but eventually I'd like to cover stuff that you guys in particular are looking for. Take care and enjoy the mods.